Welcome back to Polyspawn, I'm Kim, and today's video will be a tutorial on how to write your first PySide tool for Maya, specifically for Python 3, which is in Maya 2020 and beyond. I'll provide you with a template you can start from, point you to the API docs and other resources, and walk you through the steps of making your first UI. So let's get started. So this is my template that you guys can start from. If I copy and paste this into my script editor, I get a little PySide window. And this is loosely based off of a document from Autodesk, working with PySide in Maya. And it's a really good read, guys. If you want a deeper understanding, I would really recommend it. Just keep in mind that it's written for Maya 2017 and Python 2, so there are some things that are deprecated in it, but I have written the template in Python 3, so no worries about that. So instead of copy and pasting all that text into the script editor, I can actually use the exec function, which is for Python 3. Exec file was the command for Python 2. So if I do that again with this script, I get the exact same result. So that's cool, but let's look into what it's actually doing. So first I'm importing open my UI and Shiboken wrap instance. And I'm using that to get Maya's main window pointer and converting it into a Qt instance. And so returning Maya's main window. So that's what that function is doing. We have it called here. And I'm passing the main window to our first tool UI as the parent parameter. And the parent is already a class attribute of QWidget. And then I'm setting window flags like it does in our example and setting an object name, which it mentions in the document. A unique object name is needed for your widget so that it can be used and looked up through this command. And I'm setting my window title to first UI tool, and that's just going to be what shows up in our title bar. I'm setting the geometry. The argument order is the X position, the Y position, and width and height. Then I'm calling build UI, which is where I'm going to populate our UI with all the widgets, and connect UI, which is where I'm going to connect the widgets to their actions. And lastly, we're going to show the tool. Now let's add some stuff that the user can actually interact with. First, we need to set a layout. So I'm going to add just a very basic vertical layout. And I'm going to set this in our UI. If we go to the PySide QT GUI doc that's linked below, you can get a list of all the layouts and widgets you can add to the window. If I search layout, here are all the other options of layouts we can use. But I will just go with the VBox layout, which will set our widgets vertically as seen here. Next, I'm going to add a button to the UI. So if I search button, here are the options we have. I'll use Q push button. And in the documentation, there's going to be like a very basic example here. So I'm just assigning the Q push button to the variable button. And the first argument is going to be the text that appears in the button like this. And the second argument will be the parent widget. So I'm just going to copy this, I'm going to rename this to create sphere button and also rename the text. Now I'll add this create sphere button to my V layout. Okay. So if I run this now, let's see what I get. Cool. So I have a button here. If I press it, it does nothing. So let's add an action to it. To do this, I need to connect the button's click action to a function. And I'm going to have its action just say rating spheres. All right, so that's how you would connect a button's click to an action. Now let's get the button to do something in Maya. To get a Python command, usually you can actually start from what's outputted in the script editor. So let's try that. So if I create a sphere, it spits out this mel command, and we can convert that to Python. 
So the first text here is going to be the Maya command, and then each flag starts with a hyphen and followed by a space and their value. And when there's more than one value, usually it's safe to treat it as a list. Okay, so if I run this, I get the same result. And these are just the default settings that Maya will automatically use when you create a sphere. So you can change these as needed. And you can also find out more about your command if you go to Autodesk's command documentation. So I'll show you that. And if I scroll to the bottom, there's always an example of how to use it in Python. Now that we have our Python command, I can add this to the action. And if I run the tool again, the button creates spheres. Awesome. Now I'm going to go through the same steps to make a play blast button. Oh, and don't forget to add your Maya import here. All right, so I've created our play blast button, changed the text on top, and also added it to our V layout. Now let's give it an action, uh, but first I'm going to make this action more unique. Okay, so I'll just duplicate that and make my play blast button action. And for now, I'll just have it print. Great, so that's working. Let's do the same process to convert the mel command to a Python command. If I right mouse button on my timeline, I'm going to get this pop up. And if I click the options box here, you get all the settings that the play blast uses. So our mel command is going to use the settings that are set here. So just make sure that that's set to what you wanna use. I'm using AVI format and I checked on save to file and I'm going to set a file location. Now, if I click play blast, it will output our mail command as well as our play blast. And I'm just going to do the same thing that we did before and convert this into Python. So the first text is our my command. And usually if there is letters, you can treat that as a string and put some quotes around it. And I'm going to store our file path in a variable. And if you want to know what each of these means, you can just go to the same document I showed you before, but actually there's another shortcut to get to the exact command documentation, which is you, oops, you highlight over the text and then you right click and click command documentation. So in another window, it just opened up this URL. And what I'm looking for is actually the overwrite flag, force overwrite. I'm going to add this in so that while we're testing, it'll keep overwriting our file path here. Okay, so now if I run this, let's see if it play blasts. Oh, I misspelled sequence. Okay, let's try that again. Okay, cool, so that worked. And I'm just going to add that to the play blast section. So I've just added a few things and you don't have to do this, but if you want to, I've added a os.listdir to check what's already in your directory. And if your file name already exists, then it'll version it up. So that way you don't actually have to overwrite, it'll just keep versioning up. Now in the play blast, there wasn't actually anything happening. So let's add some sort of interest to our animation. So I'm just gonna create some spheres and I'm going to add a button for animating. And I'll just do the same thing that I did for the play blast button. I'm going to copy and paste my play blast button and rename the variables that need to be changed. And I'm also going to connect it to an action. Okay. 
Now to animate all the spheres, I need to get all the spheres transforms. So I can do that with the my command ls, which is list. And I'm going to say I want all the strings that start with key sphere and star, which is our random, like our wild card. And it'll be like any of these numbers. So I'll use that. And I'm going to say transforms equals true or one. And if I print it, I should get all the transforms for the spheres. Okay, so that worked. I'll assign that to a variable. Then I'm going to loop through all the frame numbers that I want to set a key on, as well as loop through all the nodes in the sphere list. And we're going to use a my command called set keyframe. So it's highlighted blue there. And if I go to the command documentation, you can scroll all the way to the bottom and get an example. So you can kind of see that you just pass it a node, the attribute, the time, and you're also going to need to pass it a value. So I want my spheres to move on X, Y, and Z for translation. So I'm going to pass this node attribute translate X, the value. I'm going to use this random function and I'll set it to 10, negative 10 and 10 and I'll set the time to time. So I'll do the same now for translate X and translate Z. Okay, so for each of these keys, loop through each of these nodes and set a random value on the time for translate X, Y, and Z. Okay, so let's run this. And if I quickly just play, you can see that the spheres are animated randomly on the frames that I wanted. So that's working. And now I can just copy this into our animate action. And don't forget to add your random import. Now we can try the tool out with all the buttons working together. If I run the tool, they're animated. And if I play blast, goes to version three and we have our animated play blast. And in case you didn't know, you can drag your Python code from your script editor into your custom tool shelf and just create a new button. So instead of running it from the script editor, I can now run it from my tool button. From this workflow, you can really expand on these ideas. You can develop the logic and functionality of your code in Maya for pretty much any manual actions that you'd make and make them automated and then add it to your UI and continue refining it. And with the code in this example, you could even repurpose it and say for rigging, you could make specific controllers of a rig animated and then play blast them to check their range of motion. One last thing I'm going to add is that right now there can be multiples of the same tool open. This is okay, but this expects the user to close the previously opened windows. So I'm actually going to add something in our template so that it doesn't do this. So I'm going to set a global variable called first UI tool. And this is going to be the instance of our first tool UI. So I'll just replace these two variables. And before actually initiating this class, I'm going to try to close it. So now if one of the windows exists, it'll try to close it. And if it doesn't, it'll just pass. Now, if I try to launch the window, it will close the previously open ones. 
so this will keep it a lot neater for the user. And of course, there's many other ways to do this, so let me know if you have found a better way. That's all I've got for you guys today. I hope you found this tutorial helpful, and if you'd like to see more of this sort of content, please like and subscribe. And comment if you have any questions, and I'll try to answer them if I can. Bye!